Hey everybody, Josh, KI6NAZ. You know I like making antennas out of interesting things. Today I thought I would walk you through some of my favorite things on making antennas. Maybe a kit perhaps that you can keep on your person if you have a radio with a tuner, a decent tuner, or even without a tuner, what can you do? Uh, likely it would be an external tuner. But anyway, let's talk about it today. The kit to turn almost anything into an antenna. Okay, so here's kind of what you'd use. Oh, here, let me clear up some space here. I got some stuff going on in the background, some other videos I'm working on. But generally, I use this um, in the field if I want to make an antenna out of something, you know, unexpected. It's really the magic of this box that allows me to kind of play around with the internal tuner of the KX2. If I wasn't using something with an internal tuner, well, I use this uh, MFJ QRP pocket tuner, which has worked really well. I've used this for nine to one unons, some exotic materials. But so the other thing I like to use is this QRP guys tuning indicator. And so with it, you can uh, drop your SWR really quickly uh, if you have an adjustable antenna, something that you can change the leads out. When you key down with something like CW, the light will be very dim if it's not tuned, and it'll be very bright if it's in tune. And then you switch it to operate, and you just you just keep going. Uh, you can use this in conjunction with something like the MFJ Pocket Tuner. You just have to make sure that you know you've got the switch in correctly, and you're connecting it. A lot of coax to use an external tuner. That's why I generally like to use something like just this. Uh, KX2 or something with an internal tuner like the Shegu X5105, which I also will carry around, particularly if I'm doing experimental stuff. The X5105 is eh, sometimes a better run than the KX2 because it has the SWR meter built in. So as you've probably seen before, if you've got some wonky antenna, and you don't know how it's behaving with the X5105, hit the SWR and there it is. Uh, I'm on the step IR, so you can, uh, you can see it's extremely flat right now. But if I turn it over to my NFED, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's about what I would expect. Not bad, actually. 2.0, two two not terrible. You can increase this a bit. This is, you need more space here between three and one, really widen that up, but that's not what this is about. No, the video today is about this little guy. This is just a simple little, Altoids tin. In fact, this is the um, Meritech tin that I picked up. It's metal. Who knows what you can make out of that. Um, but I also carry a wire winder on top of it or, you know, a Velcro strap. And so this is kind of what you can use with radios with tuners to make something an antenna. I carry various parts of this all together, but I never really thought about putting it all into one box. And actually, I've got some more space here. Uh, this is too big to fit, but that would be a nice addition. Maybe give me some ideas of what else I can fit in here that would help making an antenna. Uh, I probably should throw a razor blade in here, so that, that'll go in because you never know when you have to, you know, get some tape or paint off of something that you want to make an antenna. So I'll, I'll put that in later. Anyway, let's get into this. So the first thing, which is probably one of the more important parts of this whole kit, is a wire with an alligator clip. And this is what I use when I'm trying to use random things out in the field as an antenna, just to try it out as an experiment, having fun, whatever. And all, God, I really made a knot of this, didn't I? Jeez. All you're doing with the alligator clip is getting a really good electrical connection. I clip it on and then I kind of like rub it around a little bit so those teeth bite through the oxidization the oxidization, the oxid. Now I can't even say it right. The oxidation on whatever it is you're work, or maybe a little bit of paint, right? Or you use a knife and, and scrape it off a little bit. That goes into this guy, which is the BNC post connector. Um, this you just add your line in here. Of course, scrape a little bit of the shielding off, connect it, and then this is a radial that I've cut for you know 14 megahertz or 20 meters, you're going to, again, use the tuner to sort you out. So you can't get too picky on this thing. Now, this last item, this last item is, is something new that I've started to carry with this kit. 
it's a magnet. And the idea with this is it's just strong enough that if you found something that you was flat, it didn't have somewhere to alligator clip into it, you just connect them together like that. And then that's it. That's all you're going to do. You'll likely have to scrape some oxes, <laughs> scrape some rust or paint um, off of whatever surface you're connecting it to. And, and that's all there is to it. So let's see if we can find something to turn into an antenna around here. So another advantage of having this magnet around you is um, you can also use this to see if you've got ferrous metal or whatever, right? Because, you know, maybe you've got a fire extinguisher laying around and you're like, well, I need an antenna and, and maybe we should use this fire extinguisher. Notice I scraped a little bit of metal off here. I'm going to connect it. Now, something to keep in mind when you're making random things antennas is make sure it's isolated from things. I'm getting my KX2 the heck out of here. I'm getting all kinds of stuff out of here. Even though we're not dealing with a lot of power, we still want to be as safe as possible. So I am getting delicate, delicate electronics out of here. All right. So what do we do first? Well, let's hit the tuner and see what happens. Wow. We just tuned up a fire extinguisher. This is on... On 20 meters though, this is just abusive. So we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it to six. There we go. Let's check the SWR. So turn the tuner off and we'll do an SWR reading. You kidding me? My fire extinguisher is three to one SWR. <laughs> and see, as I, as I touch it, right, it's gonna change it a bit. I don't even know what's happening. Anyway, that's just crazy. So let's get out of here. Uh, let's tune this up really quick. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> You've tuned up a fire extinguisher for amateur radio. <laughs> why you would do this? Because you can. That's absolutely why you would do this. <laughs> I figured out the perfect thing to go in the kit, my wonderful Tactical Keychains Tuck 2. This thing's awesome. Thank you Tactical Keychains for sending me this. One of my favorite tools uh, that I carry. Can I do it? Yeah, I did it. <laughs> so I have some parting words on all this shenanigans. First of all, pack a good antenna uh, with you. Pack a decent bit of wire in case you did need to make a real antenna. You could you could actually just use this as a real antenna, cut it in half, and um, and, and you could use this for a, a higher band, for instance, if you cut it to resonance. Would this work in some instances if you were using something like a large metal pole that was isolated from the earth, right? It's got to be separated from the earth. It's going to be touching the ground. Yeah, possibly. This This could work fine. This idea came to me because of the G-Captain. Uh, if you remember the interview I did with the G-Captain a couple of weeks ago, he posted on the Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook group that uh, he wasn't able to use a guardrail as an antenna. And so a couple of questions jumped to mind is, was the guardrail connected anywhere from the metal, from its body to the earth? If it was, this won't work. But there's no reason why you can't take something like this, uh, throw a couple of things into it, you know, It might not all fit in with that lanyard, but we'll see. We can probably make it work. That magnet is pretty strong. That helps to hold things in here too. So this tie wrap now is the problem. But hey, that's why you got this guy, right? Done. So there's no reason. <laughs> I'm not going to leave that tuck two in there, by the way. Um, there's no reason why you can't have a kit like this then, you know, in your bag. And really, most of the stuff you already have on you, right? You can make an antenna um, out of wire and this BNC connector, which likely you already have. I know I talk about this a lot, but you should have at least two or three of these, if not more. 
put one in every one of your go bags that has your HF radio in it, any HF radio. You never know when you need something like this. Do you want to rely on this? Not necessarily. There are some antennas that work entirely off of this that work fantastically, but you know, you never know what you're going to need. Always have wire on you. A magnet's not a bad idea. All this stuff you should already be carrying with you, by the way. And a utility blade is always nice to have. So those are just my thoughts. This is a bit of a fun video. I needed a reason to try and uh, make an antenna out of that fire extinguisher anyway. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this fun little video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing because you know there's some reviews coming down the pipeline. If you didn't see it on that table somewhere, there's actually two items that I'll be talking about in the near future. And one of them, probably the eagle, actually, you don't even have to be eagle-eyed. It was right there if you missed it. Uh, some of you are probably going to be sending me messages right now, right now. Uh, anyway, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you later. See ya.